Good evening. Life is beautiful, isn't it? And this movie is set up in World War, how a father gives a beautiful life to a child in a camp. He creates a world which is very beautiful in a very sad environment. It's a movie which gives you hope, optimism, and gives you a reason to go on. But one thing which is coming again and again in the theme of the evening, that only thing which is certain is uncertainty for us. Even when this diagnostic tool at the hospitals, life is measured by ups and downs. When it's flat, it says life is missing. So moving on, what makes life beautiful is because it's uncertain. If it was certain, just imagine every day you're getting up and having the same cereal, same bread and jam, taking the same path, going to the same class, doing the same subject, it gets boring. You need change and you need to embrace uncertainty rather than be fearful of it. What I'm going to do over the next 10 minutes is talk through what I have gone through personally. Uh, and how my life has changed over the last three years. Let's move on to the next one. I was born in India, a town called Calcutta. That's my picture when I was in grade three. I had a unique opportunity. I was the only boy in a girls' school. <laughs> Fantastic. We were a co ed school out of 29, and that's what the time was. My first love was happening. <laughs> the school decided to turn itself into an all-girls school and throw me out. There goes my love story. But it was a great time. Moving on, that's me turning around 18. I used to play a lot of cricket. Or I felt I played a lot of cricket. I was awful. But that was my dream. I wanted to become a cricketer. In India, Cricket is a religion, not a sport. So you can imagine everybody wanted to become a Sachin Tendulkar, and I was also one of them. But what happened during this whole cricketing season was I never got a chance to bat or bowl. All I was required to do was keep scores. It was as really, really awful. And when I kept score, I became very good at accounting. So that led to a path that I became a certified public accountant, right? A good outcome from what I, playing sports came out of. However, that led to the next very transparent path of my life. In India, when we grew up, at my time, it was very simple. Parents told you, choose, become a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or a chartered accountant. If you didn't have these four degrees, you were an abnormal kid. So luckily, I fit into one of those four. And guess what? I became a CPA and life was really, really good. And I'll show you how life was good as you watch this video. Hopefully it plays. Uh, that's me working at Citibank. Uh, lots of parties. City gave me everything possible. Great friendship. Great life. Money was never an object to be worried about. This was an everyday scene for us. I think we can stop. We can pause it, yes. And we can go back to the slide. And City took me to whatever I wanted to do. So, so much so that I said, hey, I've done running the operations side and we were launching products after that. I want to run the technology department. They said, go ahead. They didn't know whether I can run, I couldn't write a piece of code ever in life. They said, go run the technology department. 
Then I came out and said, no, no, I'm bored of writing technology. Can I become the finance head again? Because that's what I've trained for. I said, be our guest. They threw me again in an uncertain department. <laughs> very, very strange organization. A global organization gave me every possible opportunity, whichever I wanted to. And then uh, came 2003. They said, why didn't you go to Singapore? And I stayed there in Singapore. Again, uncertain time, but not uncertainty which is surmountable. It's very simple life, much better than what you're living in India. And in fact, in India, getting a cab itself is uncertainty, <laughs> right? So Singapore, Hong Kong is a dream land for most Indians to come to. 20 years, Singapore, Hong Kong, I was just talking to my son here, and I said, I've been to Poland, I've been to Russia, I've been to so many countries thanks to that world. And I've seen the world. And then 20 years later in the company, I could have literally been on the top and enjoyed under the shadows of my hard work of last 20 years and lived the next 10 years. But this saying which goes in the corporate world, died at 40, buried at 70. Right? A lot of people do that because they lose their passion. They lose the purpose of life. They lose, they just come to work every day to just manage that nine to five chore and go back to something they love. In fact, we used to call some people weekend warriors. They were full of life on Saturday, Sunday, and they were dead on Monday to Friday, <laughs> right? Uh, while this was happening, I would love you to watch this video. This is what happened to me. Please play this, please watch this fully. It's a story about an amputee, how she took her life in her own hands and climbed Mount Everest. This is what I was going through, school, college, job. She's legendary, right? 49 trains over her leg overnight. Fought for a cause which was not hers. 
because somebody else was troubling somebody else on the train. Uneducated, just was playing volleyball for her state, going to a city to play the game. Life changed for her. She could have given up. She could have got a job based on a government grant and lived her life. But in that crisis moment, she decided she wants to climb Mount Everest. Even sane people don't make that choice. She did it. There's another story in this. This school is called Life School. And it's run by my friend. He had to give up his education in grade 12. For financial crisis have hit his family and they had to abandon the city and they had to go live in a village because that's where they could survive. He started this school about five, six years back. Completely after grade 12, he was working as a laborer in camps in India. And from there, today he runs a very successful school. And he says, our system, school system, don't teach us how to live life. It teaches us how to do, solve statistical problem, how to run economics books, how to reach philosophy, but doesn't tell us how to run life. Life is only taught by living a life and with adventure. So he brings these inspirational speakers and he trains people across. He's got a motto to train 10, 100,000 teachers on his own money in India today. How to train kids to live life beautifully. So two stories in that, that inspired me. I had a lot of fears because I was getting everything going for me. School, college, kids, wife, good job, traveling all over the world in business class. But I was, wasn't happy. I had to change something. Boris, if you could please. And that's where I left my job and I said, I'm going to do a startup. And that startup is called Monexo. It's a two and a half year old company in, in Hong Kong, full of challenges. Boris was with me. He's faced some of them. Uh, it's a, when you talk about financial services in a startup, you have to talk about regulators. It's not a cheap startup you can do. It's not like an app which you can build and sell it on 99 cents on WhatsApp, uh, on, on Apple Store. Or you have to look at a lot of regulations and do it. So it costs a lot of money. So I literally spent all my life saving building this company. I have a son who's going to go to college. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to pay that. But we embraced it. We said, and he's been very supportive. Two and a half years now, we have paying customers. We've grown from Hong Kong to India. We have two markets which we are working now. It hasn't been a, a, a smooth sailing journey. And in that time, I came through a term called VUCA. It's a military term, which is going to happen to all of us, whether it's life or anywhere else. It stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Because when you're in war, that's what happens to every military guy on the field. He can't run back and ask, what should I do? He has to make that decision under that volatile, ambiguous, complex, and uncertain situations. And that's what business is all about. But what has kept me going is these three things which has come to me. And I've distilled that, my learning, in the next three slides. If you could. Do what you love, love what you do. It's a long journey. When I joined the bank, my seniors would tell me, Mukesh, slow down. It's running a marathon. You're going to be working for 40 years, so don't try and finish everything today. But they also told me that I love what you do. And I've been telling myself, I've been only able to survive this two and a half journey because I love what I do. Every time I meet a customer who tells me that this, my service is helping them do something more, it is simpler than going to a bank, it is faster than what I created at the bank, just gives me the motivation to keep doing it again and again. Next one. Well, every day in a household, milks are spilt. Uh, and then how you react to it changes your day. People go into, out of the house with that spilt milk in mind. Kids yell that, and then they get into road rage, right? Or they come to school and kids ask, right? 
where did the teacher get out of the bed from, right? <laughs> right? It all happens. But don't worry. Deal with it calmly. Things will always be not in your control. And that's what I have learned. In my business, I can only control this much. The unexpected is much more than I can imagine. Every morning is a new day for me and very different. While the business keeps running, I'm thrown with new challenges every day. And I don't necessarily react to it anymore. I take the facts in and move on. Again, people have talked about stretching yourself. It's, it need not be climbing Mount Everest. Whatever it is, whether you want to sing a song, whether you want to learn a piano, do it now. They say, one day or today, right? Just make that happen. And I've, 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 I love to say myself, and I've said that to everybody in my team, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because if you're not comfortable being uncomfortable, nothing happens in the comfort zone. Everything happens when you are uncomfortable. Look at players who are even in the world-class Olympic. When they go to the, the pool, they go and play the game, it's an uncomfortable moment even though they've been training for a long time. It's that one moment which makes them tick, make the next Olympic. So be uncomfortable at that pace. And they're also uncomfortable even though they know that they're playing somebody whom they've won many times. The last one, you will fail. You will fail many times. It's just like riding a bicycle. You will fail many times in your journey. But get up, again get on the bicycle and ride. You will get where you are because what you are saying is, I love what I'm doing. I'm passionate about doing what I like to do. And I want to move forward. So with this, all I will say is, go ahead and conquer your own Mount Everest, whatever it is. Continue to find happiness in what you're doing. Again, a great movie. Uh, how this gentleman, in fact, there's a move, scene in this movie where this gentleman sees a car pull out and he goes across to the gentleman and says, tell me what you do and how do you, what kind of money you make. And from there, from just being an uneducated person, he becomes the world's best trader. So, again, I wish everybody happiness. Continue pursuing your path. Be passionate and you'll get there. Thank you very much.